Hello teachers! The goal of this video is to help you see how you might use Google Earth as a tool in your classroom to support student learning. As a note, Google Earth has lots of bells and whistles. It's really an amazing program. This video will support a beginner in using this tool for the Understanding Region Africa unit and hopefully you'll be able to use this tool in later units as students are needing to look at geography. First, if you don't have Google Earth, you need to download the program to your computer. Using a search tool, search for Google Earth. This should give you a result that allows you to go directly to the Google Earth page. In the upper right hand corner, you can download the program. To start Google Earth, use the icon that looks like this. You can find this icon as a shortcut on your screen or from your start menu. When Google Earth opens, they give you tips that might be helpful. I'm just going to close those tips for now. First, I want to discuss a few simple controls. You can use your mouse to zoom in, zoom out, move the globe, and even spin the globe. If you're using a smart board, you can use the controls in the upper right. Next, I'm going to talk about the layers over here on the left. And as I talk about these layers, I'm going to show a close-up image. Let's take a moment and discuss how the layers on the left work. I'm going to show these layers up close first before I use them and show you what happens to the image of the Earth on your screen. Layers allow you to see different things on the Earth, either one at a time or all together. The way you choose to use layers depends on what you want your students to think about. As you guide young geographers, layers allow you to help students make sense of the world and make some wonderful connections about this world, in this case, Africa. Anytime you want to show a layer, simply click the box. You can have as many or as few boxes checked at a time. If you see a plus sign, that tells you there are more specific layers underneath, and it expands. Some of the layers you might like are in borders and labels. I'm going to click the plus sign and open this layer up to see more details. I see there are two more plus signs, and I'm going to click both of them so I see even greater detail. Under borders, I like to use international borders and country names. Under labels, you might like to see geographic features. You're going to see that I use some of the simplest labels from the very beginning, or the simplest layers. Let's see what those layers do on the Earth. Right now, all of those layers are clicked. To see the layers, sometimes you have to zoom in. At any time, I can remove a layer. As I interact with the different features on the screen, consider how you might use this to help kids understand how nations divide land with political boundaries. You might also help them to look at geographic features that they're interested in seeing. I'm going to head back to the layers, uncheck all of the other layers that I just showed, and I'll open this one on Weather. As I expand this layer, I'm going to check a few favorites. One is clouds, and the other is conditions and forecasts. Let's see what those layers do on the Earth. First, you're going to notice that the clouds give a sense of what is really going on in Africa. Clouds are connected to weather, and you'll see cloud patterns that are often connected to the temperatures throughout Africa. As I zoom in, you'll see that temperatures in the desert region are quite hot. Temperatures in other regions will be different and this allows students to apply what they're learning in real time. They're learning about weather in regions of Africa. In this unit, students look at climate patterns in these different regions, so Google Earth is a wonderful tool to take that learning and see it in real life. I'm going to head back to the layers, uncheck all of the other layers that I just showed, and I'll open this one on More. As I expand this layer, I'm going to check a few favorites. Local place names, which allows students to see capital cities, locations where there is focused human population. I also like to check water body outlines. This allows students to see rivers and outlines of lakes. When you look at these two together, you'll see that most centers of human population are located along rivers or coastlines. Again. That's most centers of human population.
This is a great way to help students see that water in every region is often connected to where people live, since water and its resources are absolutely essential to life. Last, I'll expand this one called GOI, Featured Imagery. This layer includes all kinds of amazing photographs in various regions. As you study the different regions, these images are great to pull up. They allow students to have a sense of place. Let's see what those layers do on the Earth. Again, as I zoom in, notice the stars and city names. Also, notice the patterns of human population and how they are frequently located near water. Now, I'll show you a few of the photos that are part of the GOI imagery. Hopefully this little tutorial gives a few more of you some confidence to bring this wonderful tool into the lives of your students. The more we expose kids to maps, globes, and images of the world, the more they understand. And we're even showing them the tools that they are growing up with, the tools that they will use for the rest of their lives. Who knows, maybe you'll even pull up Google Earth every single day during this unit and use it when the need arises. It is a tool best used when needed. Best of luck.